Here in the Cherokee Nation, a small group of fluent-speaking Cherokee elders are embarking upon a rescue mission. Their generation holds traditional knowledge of flora, fauna, and sacred Cherokee sites. And now they're making a concerted effort to pass this knowledge on to younger Cherokees, seeding hope that their knowledge will continue to live on for many more generations. You can use the roots as dyes, and uh, there's a few ceremonies that are performed with them as well. It's called snake tongue, and uh, a lot of uh, folks will use this in some of their heart medications. We had a request from an elder to collect a little bit of it, so. This knowledge is not something that you can find in a book often. It's something that's passed down uh, from person to person, usually within a family. The Cherokee medicine keepers are a group of about 10 um, elders and knowledge keepers, uh, most of whom are first language Cherokee speakers and all of whom bring a wealth of experience and knowledge uh, to the work that we do. Their mission is twofold. Uh, one, to perpetuate Cherokee knowledge and life ways around the plants and other beings in the woods that bring us medicine and two, to provide a voice for the land from that perspective and really a, a voice of, of protection and conservation to our lands um, within the reservation and beyond. So that's a part of, of their work in teaching younger generations, younger people what they know and it really is a bold move. And the most recent uh, you know, project that we have together is this program, the Cherokee Environmental Leadership Program and that uh, was a, a way to answer their call to pass this knowledge down. Their mission is to perpetuate this knowledge. And so we have a group of five Cherokee students, and this is a pilot program. Because if we lose all of this, we lose our crafts, we lose our language, we won't be able to identify ourselves as Cherokee people. It's given to us by a creator. This is what he gave to us to, to work with. So it's real, real important that we realize what we have uh, even in our backyard. I started out working for the tribe uh, back in 2004, and um, I was tasked to develop a, a, a database of sorts to um, record Cherokee traditional knowledge. And so as a result of that, that work and in collaboration with my longtime friend and, and coworker, Pat Gwynn, uh, we brought a lot of these people together in 2008 and um, that launched the Medicine Keepers. There's a saying, you know, number one, no Cherokee would ever be without a corn patch, which has nothing to do with corn. It's a metaphor for life. And uh, there's similar metaphors that state like, you know, without Cherokee plants, there can be no Cherokees. My name is Pat Gwynn. I work for the Cherokee Nation Secretary of Natural Resources. I also am, an, I guess, one of the uh, lead uh, liaisons for the Cherokee Nation Medicine Keepers. And today we are down here on CMS 83, Candy Mink Springs Unit 83, the tribe's uh, conservation unit for all things Cherokee medicine. CMS 83, it's, uh, it existed for a long time, almost untrodden by Cherokees. You know, it's, it's a piece of trust land, so it was, it was repurchased uh, for the tribe uh, by the U.S. government in the 1940s. And uh, the medicine keepers were looking for their home. We were able to bring them down here. There's a list of plants here that are really hard to find. You know, there's been a, 
somewhat of an equal or a, a similar paradigm with the loss of the language. Some of the, the more traditional Cherokees were seeing a loss of the culture as far as how they interacted with the environment. The goal of this Medicine Keepers is to continue the, the, the Cherokee cult, cultural customs dealing with plants. We have systems now to record it and have the information you know, documented in a safe place where we know that it's not going to be out and disrespected. Thinking about medicine holistically, broadly, is what they've instilled in me. And so that, uh, to me, speaks volumes about their mission and that using, you know, they're using medicine and, and keeping the medicine alive. As they say, na wat asquango dohti, keeping the medicine going. Uh, they're using that as a platform for really environmental protection and conservation among the Cherokee Nation. You know, what is traditional medicine? It's all of that, and it's included, uh, what, what's included in that is the spirituality that enables that medicine to actually be effective. And so, you know, when we think about what they do and their mission and how they are um, imparting this knowledge to younger generations, um, that's all a huge part of the teachings that they have to offer. We are in Adair County on some tribal trust property and we have a red root plant that is in peril based upon being in a utility line right of way that's getting sprayed every year and the road is expanding to take out its root system. So we are going to remove this plant and take it to our new immersion school. A red root is Uzdi Diligalizgi and it is one of the seven sacred plants of the Cherokee. It's one of less than five places, maybe less than three places where we know this plant exists in this general area. This is somewhat of a hot spot. This was one of the two major hot spots. And unfortunately, since the uh, late 40s, it has been uh, picked and harvested into almost extinction. I am part of the Cherokee Environmental Leadership Program. It is a um, mentorship program where we partner with the Medicine Keepers, which are elders in the Cherokee Nation. The program was presented in a way where it was connecting us with Cherokee culture through language and um, holistic medicine and food practices that are uh, part of the Cherokee culture. I felt that this was an opportunity for me to gain connection to the land and to back to my people. Just as it's difficult to understand ourselves as Cherokee without our language, I think it's equally difficult to understand ourselves without a connection to land. The language is connected to the land in that it is describing a living place. And so certain words that we might have for plants are describing what they do in that place and how they relate to other beings, whether they're eaten by certain beings, whether they provide a, a bed for you know, certain animals, um, how they help people through medicine. And so all of that is, is a part of our knowledge and it's related to the language. When we think broadly about that knowledge and that connection to land, uh, we think about health. And so how does that contribute to the health of our communities and the health of our people? They learn about you know, traditional food ways, uh, traditional medicines. It's, it's not training them how to be medicine people. That's something that is, for Cherokee people, that's, that's more of a um, interpersonal thing. And also we say that the Creator chooses you know, medicine people. It's, it's not us as, um, as human beings. One of our spiritual advisors to the medicine keepers, Croslin Smith, he's told us we have to honor the spirit of this land. And to me, that spoke volumes as to our responsibilities here in the Cherokee Nation in northeastern Oklahoma as Cherokee people, as indigenous people, to continue those relationships in a good way. It's the foundation of our health. It's the foundation of our education. It's the foundation of our language, that relationship to place. Okay. Mm -hmm.